Welcome everybody for today's podcast stream. This is actually our first podcast, and we are very, very happy to have our talented boys and girls here today with us. And they are Jaisil and Bakara and Samru and Hawkeye, and they are super awesome, cool boys and girls, and super happy to have them all. Today with us, and as you can see at the title, today we're gonna talk about should Christians play video games or watch animes. And this topic is not an old, it's not a new one. People talk about it before, but it seems people keep asking for it and seeking answer for it. So kind of let's just talk about it and see how the things goes. Like um, I'll say, when I watch football, I come from a big football fit watching family. I don't care much for NFL cheerleaders. Not a lot of them. I think they're way too low cut on the front, and it's completely different than college football, where they're actually gymnasts and stuff doing a lot of things that they do. But you know, there's some things that I avoid on that front. So when it comes to anime, I love a good anime story, but there's some anime out there I just can't watch. And in fact, sadly, that's getting to be more and more anime because of this <laughs> ridiculous amount of sexuality in it. Um, it's tempting for me, and that's something I have to avoid. And then same with gaming. There's some games out there where there's just way too much skin showing, or it, not necessarily even skin, but just doing things in an inappropriate manner, and just those things that I have to avoid. So, um, yeah, that's that would be where I would draw the line on a lot of things for me. But that's true of anything in my life. Um, anywhere I go, uh, I have to be aware of what is difficulty for me, not necessarily for other people, but... Um, what is a, what is a temptation for me that I have to avoid? Yeah, I would agree. Um, I was just talking to somebody about that, the similar thing this um, yesterday, because it's true. Like you have to avoid whatever is a temptation or something that's going to be bothering you. So, like in the case of anime, I agree. I'm the same way. Like I don't watch. I watch a lot of anime. Not like I used to watch more. I don't. I don't watch as much as I used to. I don't have the time. But like I'm very picky. On which animes I watch be, depends on the content. There is actually a lot of good anime that, that doesn't have a lot of sexual and perverse content. But yeah, like I, anime, it's fun. It's funny because like you can just look just looking at the cover of the anime, or you can just watch like a trailer. Yeah, you already know what's going to be in that anime. Anime is very like this is what you're going to get. So this is not what you want. Don't watch it. You know, or anime will will mess with you and it'll show like the first episode is really fan servicey and then the rest of the anime is not which i can't which is just dumb but yeah so you have to like you know be careful what you're going to watch and just um just ask god you know like if you're not sure you feel conviction you feel from the holy spirit not to watch it just don't watch it you know or don't play it you know like there's some games that i i have friends that they'll play but i won't play and they're christian and they're and they're like okay with it but I won't play it because, and they're like, "Oh, why don't you play that game?" Because I don't want to. You know, it's I don't feel comfortable. It's too much violence. It's too gory. It's too freaky. You know, like I don't. And there's so many games that I can play. So much anime I can watch. You know, it's like I don't have to play that one that I don't want to. You know, there's like ten other ones I want to, and then the one that I don't want to. Who cares? You know, life will go on. So there's always be a new anime, a new game that'll come out. So, yeah. Oh, yeah, definitely these days. There's there's too much under the sun to even watch. I can't keep up with anime anymore. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I remember back in high school, we would always, I know I'm getting a little off topic with saying this, but I just made me think of that, jumping back to DBZ and Pokemon and stuff. Like, all your friends have watched everything. Everybody saw everything, and now I don't even have a clue. It's way too much stuff out. <laughs> yeah, because back then, you, you couldn't really, there was no Crunchyroll, there was no Funimation. Like, you just had, like, Toonami or something. And then mm-hmm. that everybody watched the same thing. But now we have it like Crunchyroll gives you access to hundreds of animes that you've never heard of that are coming out in Japan, you know, at the same time. So now there's more variety plus what we used to watch. You know, So well, at least when I was younger, I used to watch all that stuff. So, mm-hmm. yeah. Yeah, I think, uh, the overall uh, opinion, at least on, on my end, is that, um, as Paul said, that, you know, all, 
all things are permissible, but not everything is mm-hmm. going to be good for you. And um, as a Christian, that applies. And uh, I I get bombarded a lot uh, uh, in a different genre from from you guys that are into anime. Um, the thing that I'm really into is horror. And uh, <laughs> I go to all the horror yeah. um, conventions and everything. I'm really big into those style. And, uh, of course, being a youth pastor, I get questioned quite often about yeah. uh, that. And I get told I'm inviting demons into my house and things like that, um, which is absolutely not true. Uh, believe me, demons aren't coming in here. <laughs> um but you do, uh, on the other side of the coin, you do need, I believe, as a person with, with moral character, that you should be aware of what is going in through, <laughs> through your senses and know that everything that you take in by sight, by smell, by hearing, by everything, it does affect you in some way. And... Uh, as Andy was saying that, you know, there are things that are stumbling blocks for us that we also need to be aware of. And we need to be aware of for those who are around us as well. Other fellow men and women who are Christians that we, we don't want to make them stumble as well. Mm -hmm. Uh, I really, there, there is a kind of a line though there for me as far as what I want to see, I, I don't like a whole bunch of nudity um, and sexually graphic stuff. Um, I mean, if it's alluded to or whatever that it's happening, but the camera goes to black and they go move on with the story. Um, I mean, that's okay, but I don't want to watch people doing that. <laughs> mm-hmm. I think that's a private act between uh, a wife and a husband. It should be anyway. And um, I like to also do things in moderation. Like I don't, I, I don't just sit there and play video games all day. I don't just sit there and watch horror movies all day. Mm-hmm. I, I make sure that I set aside time for God and uh, reading the word and praying, meditating on it, um, having fellowship with other brothers and sisters in Christ and, and whatnot. Um, So there's a, there's a lot of different angles to look at it from, Mm -hmm. but honestly, you know, the line in the sand is, is, uh, as was said by pretty much everybody that you need to listen to the Holy spirit. And if you feel convicted, um, with anything, with any aspect of what you're um, taking into your ears and your eyes, then you, you need to listen and you need to obey that and, and be obedient mm-hmm. to God and know that there, there's a reason for that, that again, it's probably a stumbling block for you and, and you don't, you should run from temptation, not, not run into it. Mm-hmm. So I guess that'd be my two cents in a nutshell. Oh, for sure. <laughs> yeah, Karen, you can probably talk on that a little bit too. Um, I, I'll throw in a quick asterisk and then turn it to Karen. Um, we've mentioned feel the Holy Spirit convicting us a couple of times, but um, one thing I would throw a little asterisk by. I completely agree with you, by the way. Um, but I do think that we see a lot of people, especially immaturity in our people who have immature lives. Um, and I'm not knocking on them because obviously we've all been immature at some point in our lives. But uh, we often go too much with our feelings and say, oh, I can handle this or I can do this and this yeah. isn't going to bother me. Um, <laughs> true. But, you know, we got to really turn to what does the Bible say? What does God say about this and what it's ultimately going to do to us? Um, some of us have to learn the hard way. But, Karen, I know that you've done a good bit of counseling and you've dealt with a lot of people that are having a lot of issues with um, depression and different things. And you've noticed sometimes within a lot of these cases we talked about of people seeming there's been some correlation between depression and some of the things that they're indulging themselves in. And I, I just wouldn't have turned that over to you for you to talk about for a moment. Well, thank you very much. And I agree with what you guys say that uh, no matter what games or what anime we play or watch, there's no such a perfect one out there. Except the one that's called uh, VeggieTale, which is pretty neat. Um, <laughs> it's 
American made, but but I love Veggie Tales. It, yeah, it's designed to be a Christian、um, education entertainment cartoon for children. But other than that, that no matter what we watch or play, there are some some values and some characteristics would be not as holy as the guy the the Bible, and it. Would need some guidance and need some、um, discernment, and sometimes, like some of you share your personal line, your personal standard, it really very personal, and everybody could be different, and your meat could be the other person's poison, and sometimes it's really hard to just draw a line and hey,、um, everything above this line is okay, everything below this line is not personal calling. Um, sometimes could be、uh, personal Holy Spirit discernment. This is not okay. Sometimes could be this is closely related to your personal weakness that should be avoided.、Um, so it it could be different. What、mm-hmm. do you guys think? I agree with that, and and I, I did want to hit on the. You're absolutely right. I should have clarified that better about,、uh, especially <laughs> being that I talk about.、Um, Feelings quite often、uh, in Sunday school and Nawanas, and I think I just talked about it <laughs>、um, my stream last night. <clears throat> yeah, it's you know that I'm gonna just hold it up like I do in my streams. The, the, this book right here, the Holy Bible, is what we should be going by, and、um, you definitely, like I said, it's a very important. That you read through it, you meditate upon it, you pray on it, you you ask for guidance and understanding, not just knowledge but wisdom. And、uh, it is very important because if you don't have God's word in your heart tucked away, where where are you going to pull that from? I mean, it's not you're not going to get it by osmosis. Unfortunately, that'd be really nice to just hold the book up against our chests and we just have it. <laughs> Especially me, I would love to be able to do that, and and、uh, you know, be like some of those those awesome pastors and preachers who are able to recall verses specifically. I I, I sometimes have difficulty.、Um, so yeah, it's definitely more than just.、Uh, I, I was trying to keep it. Uh, concise, and、uh, I shortened it way too much by saying feeling. Yeah, it's not.、Uh, It's not just that, but you need to have the biblical standards in there, and you need to have that in your heart, and、uh, take time out to do that. But as far as、um, like individuals, I agree with that. That、uh, I think each of us here could probably.、Uh, I'm I'm not going to ask for people to raise their hand and <laughs> do it, but、um, each of us here have a stumbling block. Each of us have a weakness. Um, that's the human condition.、Um, the the great thing is we have each other to keep each other accountable. And for the Holy Spirit to、um, give us that,、uh, I'm going to go back to feeling again, I guess. But <laughs> you know, <to> give us <laughs> that we have a consciousness. We know. When we're doing something, we get that icky feeling. When we're watching an anime where they're this, you know, they're really、uh, beautifully drawn,、um, short-skirted girls or whatever. Our stumbling block is、um, intense, gory violence.、Um, in my case, usually because、uh, <laughs> I'm in the horror.、Um, you know, we know you get you do know when. You're getting into a place where it's not going to sit right with your faith, and you absolutely,、uh, if you're having a rough time making that call yourself and stopping, then and you should have some friends on speed dial, hopefully, or some a neighbor, or someone that can help keep you accountable, some way that you can distract yourself and get out of that situation. And and I. Uh, as my grace was saying, yeah, we we all are individuals, and our lines are. It's not necessarily a line, but it's、uh, different specific things that are going to trigger us to sin or 
Um, I don't know how else to word that, but uh, that we need to watch out for. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, for sure. Yeah. Yeah. No, I agree with that completely. I, I think the thing I was trying to get Karen to hit on was a little bit of the, um, as the old saying goes, you are what you eat. And just being mm-hmm. aware of, of what you're taking in. Um, as Paul tells us to meditate on what is good and pure, because ultimately, the more you're putting in yourself, that's ultimately what's going to be coming out of you in the end. Um, just to be aware of those kinds of things when we're, we're playing. But we've mentioned a lot about, you know, things to watch out for, stumbling blocks. What are some of the good things? I mean, why do we enjoy gaming and anime? What are some of the good benefits that come out of those things? Okay, I can talk on some of that. Um, especially video games, like shameless plugs and say I'm a blogger and I write mainly about connecting faith and, and video games. Um, there's a lot of good things you can pull from it. Like a lot of games have biblical values and like lessons and morals that you can learn from them. Even doesn't have to necessarily be a Christian game. To be honest, there aren't that many. There are a few good Christian video games, but they're slowly popping up here and there. But most games, no, excuse me, let me say most games. Um, there's a good chunk of games that you can learn a lot morally and just you can just grow just by watching those games like you can it'll help you uh, mature more as a person just because you're going through that story you can see these characters how they make decisions and how they react in the game the dialogue and then it's it's fun because you're playing out like a movie or a story depending on the game that you're playing and you can kind of see okay how did this character resolve this problem how did they deal with this you know, um, what decisions did they make? And that'll help you, like, you know, maybe in the future, you're not going to be in this crazy game, you know, or in a situation like the characters were. But the decisions that were made, you know, how they how they did that could help you in the future. Um, just even biblically, like, sometimes I'll play a game and then it just has nothing to do with the game, but just the way the story's playing out, it'll remind me of of a story in the Bible or a person or just something that the Holy Spirit is putting on my heart and then I'll write about it. So, I mean, I can go into several examples, but, but that's just like a general thing on how video games can be helpful. Um, and then they're also helpful aside biblically, just in general, like they help you socialize, like with friends, uh, just even this group, like personally, I found this group just because I play video games and then I wanted to look for Christian video game groups and here i am you know so it's cool like to meet people talk to people you know it doesn't always have to be that stereotype of everybody's negative and they're they're always cussing and going crazy and, and losing their losing their minds and throwing controllers you know and breaking screens like you know it's not always you know not everybody's like that um anime very similar uh to what i just said with video games like you can learn a lot just from the the relationships played out with the characters um, with anime, yeah, and the same thing like with moral lessons. You can learn a lot of lessons from watching anime. Like anime, a lot of the times it's intentionally like is trying to get to a point, like a, a positive point. For most anime, not every anime, but most anime is like that. Like it's there's you know there's a beginning, a middle, and an end. There's a problem and there's a solution. You know, it's usually like that. It's not just random. You know, there are animes that are just random. You know like Fooly Cooly or something like that. But there's some weird enemies out there. But they have no they have no point. Like you just watch, you're like, I don't know really what I'm watching. You know, like what's the point of this thing? So but like a recent anime that's good that you can see morally like the progression of the characters. Like the new one that's out now is uh the Shield Hero. That one's really good. Uh and you can see how um I, I can't remember the, that. Huh? I say yeah, we've been enjoying that. We've been watching Shield Hero. Yeah. Hero. Yeah, that one's real good. And then you can watch and you can see how it's Raptalia and I forget the guy's name. But um Shield Hero. <laughs> yeah, Shield Hero. I guess yeah. I don't has, know what yeah. his name is. I forget his name because I watched so many anime either. and then they're in Japanese names, so like all the names mm-hmm. just mesh. I don't even know until I watched the show, I'm like, Oh yeah, that's yeah. that guy's name. So you can see how like the relationship plays out, how he deals like with in the beginning of the anime, how he's dealing, how everybody like just hates on him pretty much. And then he's mm-hmm. just getting like, you know, the hater aid is strong, you know, and it's just, they just hate this guy just because he has a shield, you know? And then he kind of has to deal with that, 
deal with his emotions, how he deals with people, and then Raptalia is kind of like trying to calm him down. So it's it's nice how you, you can see like how he how he deals with himself. So it's the same thing with anime. I mean, with with anime video games in a real life, like you can learn from those things, you know. So if you're dealing with a similar situation in one of those two mediums, and you can be like, okay, well, how, how did that guy how he dealt with it was pretty good. Maybe I can deal with it like that that happens to me you know mm-hmm. so you put yourself in that person's shoes pretty much or character shoes so yeah that's that's what i would think would be some good pros always can learn um from its lessons and always can reflect the stories that may can bring us closer to god and closer to the truth maybe is that right mm-hmm. yeah i think uh pornography uh, would definitely be something you should stay clear from, um, which there are some subgenres of uh, anime, of course, um, that delve into that mm-hmm. quite extensively. <laughs> in mm-hmm. fact, that's the whole point of them. <clears throat> uh, yeah, pretty much. Again, it, it's uh, as Andy was was um, saying earlier. Uh, uh, and Mike did as well. Um, that you know, and I held up my the the Bible earlier. Um, that's really where we need to pull it from, and the things that it says that we need to abstain from. We need to abstain from. I mean, that's God talking to us through His prophets and apostles and kings, and uh, that's wisdom that we need to hold to. Um, Sexual immorality should have no place in our lives whatsoever. Pornography and and um, uh, I, I've unfortunately been w- witness to some animes that have rape and and um, all kinds of nasty stuff that I won't mm-hmm. even. I, I I don't need to go into it. You guys don't know what I'm talking about. Yeah. Um. Just. I don't mean to be the old man here, but it's just utterly disgusting. And it, it just, man, that is so against um, what we stand for as Christians. And we um, should definitely, that should have no place. There's a hard red line there. Uh, At least, yeah, there definitely, there should be. <laughs> Sadly, I've got should. quite a few friends as Christians that just don't. I just have to kindly disagree with them, but they think, oh, it's fine. I mean, I've got a number of Christian friends that watch Game of Thrones, and I'm just going to go out and put out and say, that's just not something any yeah, Christian I agree. be watching. Yeah, uh, I agree. Uh, I wish it didn't, because Game of Thrones would be good if it didn't have all that in it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I saw, like, when it first came out, a friend of mine showed me, oh, check out the show, and I'm like, okay. We watched the first episode. I was like, what am I watching? <laughs> Turn that yeah. thing off, man. Like, what is this? Mm-hmm. You know, so... Yeah. Um, as far as violence, um, I mean, what I tolerate probably goes beyond what I should tolerate, honestly. Mm-hmm. Um, I mean, my background, you, you guys know, but just for the people who are watching, I was a paramedic for 12 years mm-hmm. and um, I saw a lot. <laughs> yeah, I was going to yeah. say, you're probably and, seeing stuff. So I'm very, very desensitized, as as is obvious, I, to blood and guts and gore and um, visceral and everything. That that like it doesn't bother me at all. I and I also did time in, in a morgue. I've worked um, in the surgical department at the local hospital here, and uh, one of the many local hospitals here, and so that stuff doesn't bother me it's the context in which it's being shown that Mm. tends to bother me yeah um stuff like uh well things they they subtitle it like torture porn stuff um i tend to stay away from that where it's obvious that they're just trying to see how gross Saw fringy that they can get. Oh, yeah, that, to, that movie's disgusting. Yeah, yeah um, I tend to stay away from that stuff. Uh, it really mine's more like psychological thriller kind of horror and um, things that get you like thinking who done it kind of um, mm. mysteries and whatnot. And sometimes they do involve ghosts or whatever, or monsters, or creatures, whatever. But 
and I don't see a problem with that. But there, again, there is a line there with violence, but I'm not sure that that's like as solid of a line. Um, because I know that for me personally, I, I'm okay with watching something like Saving Private Ryan that that first battle scene is super yeah. intense you right. see it it's uh, i was i watched it for the first time with my grandfather who was in world war ii but he wasn't on the ground he was uh, flying a few 38 over what was happening um but he you know was able to he saw what was going on of course from a bird's eye view and he thought that's very realistic that's yeah brought back really bad memories for him um but at the same time uh like mike was saying earlier that kind of drew me into wow look at how awful that human beings can be the the enemy the other side what what they all that destruction and mayhem and death that they caused and and um it made me really pause and think about the human condition and where we've came from the from there like is the world a better place because of this happening or is it worse or is it just the same or is it just a, a cycle that continues you know and uh i think that we can take those kind of lessons and i know a lot of people had problems with um, a couple of the jesus movies um, especially the Mel Gibson one, yeah. Um, because it, <laughs> wow, man, when they were whipping him, that was pretty it was intense. intense. I yeah, it was intense. Yeah, I don't fall my head off at many movies, but I got to tell you, it really hit me. Yeah, that movie uh, wrecked me <laughs> more than just reading it. More than just reading about it. I, I already knew. I've been to seminary. I, I, you know, I knew the story. I had it in my head, a picture of what that looked like, what it felt like for him. Um, and it, it's well, just, just without words. Just to but, clarify from what you're saying, would that be a, a good thing or a bad use of, of war in that instance? Well, I think for a lot of people... I would think that it might wake them up, so to speak, to the intensity of what he went through for us. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, but I do feel like there are certain people that uh, would not be able to handle it. Just uh, I don't know how to word it. <laughs> <laughs> mm, yeah just mentally they wouldn't be able to uh handle it um I, i'm not i'm not I'm not saying that as elegantly maybe karen can say it more elegantly since she's better trained in that field but um <laughs> i i for me personally i thought it was a good thing for me to see it uh, and i felt that the people that i went with that they had so much it was so much more real to them at that point mm -hmm. seeing that and acknowledging that, you know, like I said, when you're just reading it, you can kind of foo foo it a little bit in your mind so that you can deal with it. Um, and some people didn't realize, uh, some of the people I had taken with me didn't realize how intense it was. They just thought, Oh, I just, you know, had some welts and then they nailed him to the cross and he died like a couple minutes later, you know, kind of a thing. Yeah. <laughs> like it was really a nice kind of, well, not an easy death, but it wasn't that bad. And then they saw that and they were like, is that really how it happened? And I, yeah, that's, that's pretty close. And, uh, they're, he did that for me. And, um, a couple of them were kind of, there were two people in my group who were on the, they, they said that they were uh, Christian agnostics, uh, <laughs> was what they said, that they, they yeah. kind of, they followed the Bible and everything, and they believed that Jesus was a real person, but they weren't quite sure that he was the son of God or 
anything like that. He was more of a Gandhi figure to them. Mm-hmm. And uh, after seeing that film with us, they became Christians. They're still Christians today. And that film came out how many years ago? 15 years ago? Something yeah, like that. Yeah, it was a while back. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and um, they're both working for the church with me. So, <laughs> I mean, I would say. You know, God definitely used that film. Whatever you think of Mel Gibson, I mean, I think uh, he's not a great man. He's faulty. He's he's got issues. But um, I I love that film for what it did for my friends and for you know helping be that that push. Um, so in that instance, was the violence necessary? I mean, like. They could have foo-fooed it. A lot of the old black and whites films and, and uh, the greatest story ever told wasn't all that violent um, during that scene. And and uh, the Jesus movie that um, they put out in the 90s was not that violent either and maybe had the same results. But uh, just... um, Well, I think going back to your earlier a um, couple of questions... Um, I think one of the things that has always really struck me with anime in particular is um, kind of one of the things that, at least for me, separates it a lot from some of the more Western cartoons is that they're not afraid to ask and to deal with some really deep questions that Mm -hmm. um, here... If it was a cartoon here, they simply wouldn't be asked. Or if it was in, like, um, a more, I suppose, flesh and blood film, would make for a very, very divisive type of, of a movie. But in anime, I think it's very interesting how they can use that medium to ask some really, really fundamental questions, but in a way that gets people to think about them and to talk about them without immediately jumping to sides. Um, So like one of my favorite examples with that is um, to me really like the central theme of Full Metal Alchemist is the sanctity of life. They're asking, you know, how much is, is human life really worth? Which um, I think is a really important question, not just for us as society, but you know, for us, for us as Christians, you know, we're, we're made in the image of God and, um, ultimately, the the answer that they come to is there's nothing that's more valuable than a than a human life. Um, so I think I think that's that's really a significant thing. And then I suppose for the your question earlier about um, you know sh- should Christians watch anime? Um, I think I think a lot of times. At least I can only speak for myself. But as a Christian, I tend to get very wrapped up in what should I not do as opposed to what should I do. So instead of when I look at it, it's, you know, what do I and when I'm deciding what do I need? What should I not watch? More importantly, what should I watch? What are things that are getting me thinking about those questions what are things that I could watch with friends of mine that will get them maybe thinking and talking about some of these things Um, and I think that's for just sort of a last point in my own experience I think for anime that's one of its greatest strengths because because of these questions that it brings up in sometimes a very light-hearted way I've been able to have really really significant conversations with people that I might not have had that opportunity to do otherwise and I really appreciate that opportunity you know be they believers or non-believers so that's my two cents good point um I remember uh, my husband have a uh, moment with anime that uh, would you mind sharing like what happened 
while you're watching a random anime. <laughs> yeah, you can tell a better story than I do. Yeah, actually, I'd completely forgotten about that. That was actually one of the, the really was the key moment for me um, in God calling me into uh, life in the church, effectively, or admissions. Just want to be clear that I he wanted me to go to seminary. I was actually was watching Angel Beats, of all things. I don't know if anybody mm-hmm. else has seen that anime. Um, but the main character, it's um, the basic story is that there's these characters that are all in this afterlife period, and everybody that's in this afterlife can't move on to, obviously they've come with this, this kind of pseudo um, version of the afterlife, whatever they want it to be. But you're, they're kind of called purgatory. Basically it's a bunch of high schoolers and they all have these issues that they haven't dealt with kind of the classic ghost issue. Um, and one character doesn't. And, and we go through this entire anime and you find out in the very last episode, and I'm spoiling. So but this is kind of important to the story is he finds out his entire purpose in being there was to help the other people move on um and it was just this really beautiful moment for me god really used that to help me grasp an understanding of why i'm here he really he had been pushing that on me it's something we have to understand as christians that this is why we're not just poofed up into nothing into heaven after we get saved it's good god has a purpose for a life he knows that we know him but now he's called us to go out and carry out the great commission of telling others about him and obviously, knowledge, head knowledge, we all know this, we, especially those that grow up in church. We hear it all the time. But God used this in a way as kind of my bomb donkey or whatever you want to you know, kind of throw it in there. He used this as that moment of just opening my eyes to this is what I mean by that, Andy. It's not just words. You really do have a, a purpose. And so that was the day I made up my mind to go to seminary. And it definitely was what God had in store for me, no doubt. So, yes, God can use anything for his glory, no doubt. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, cool. Thank you for sharing. Um, so let's come back to the very or- original question that we have already talked about and just kind of try to briefly summarize. So games or watch anime? Any short answers? <laughs> Yes, they should. <laughs> Next question. <laughs> okay, if the answer is yes, does it mean that we can do whatever we want, play whatever we want, and watch whatever we want? Yes and no. Um, obviously, you can because because you can. You just buy the game, you watch the anime, you do it. You know, but that's up. It's like a lot of things. Like it's between you, between you and God. Though, I I like that answer, and I don't like that answer because then people use that as an excuse to watch and do whatever they want. So, if you have a real relationship with God, in my being a Christian for as long as I have, the Holy Spirit will convict you. If you if you're dealing with something and you actually spend time in prayer, and just have a real relationship and intimate relationship with God, He will convict you. Whether you you can ignore it. You can pretend like I didn't hear that. That's not God. That's my head. You know, you can you can ignore it and pretend it's not there. But if you feel not to, okay, I'll give you an example. Like I don't, I don't play GTA. Like I don't play Grand Theft Auto. I don't like it. I don't play. It's too violent. It's too pornographic. It's too. They have cuss words up and down. I don't play the game. It's a great game. Very well made. It's made like a billion dollars or something. I don't know how much. The game is one of the best selling games on the planet of his of history video games. I don't play it, you know. Great game. I can respect the art. You know, same thing with anime. There's great anime, but I don't watch them. You know, like um, I'm trying to think of well, anime is more trickier. But these video games, it's more because video games are very like blunt. Like GTA is is GTA. It's a violent, full of cussing game. It's very to the point. Anime can be kind of like some parts are good, some parts are bad. You don't really know. You have to, you know. So yeah, like you have to, like I said before, if you if you don't if you don't feel comfortable playing the game, don't play it. Play another game. You know, there's probably ten other games that you would want to play. You don't have to play that particular game. You know, so should you watch anime? Yeah, watch anime. If you're not sure which anime, what do I watch? How do I know? You know, um, 
shameless plug again, you can go to um, beneaththetangles.com and they have a uh, anime, Christian anime recommendation list. And they also go over like they, they can show you different animes you can that are safe, comfortable to watch and they're good, not just like, you know, because because they're they're positive and then they're terrible. Like they're, there's really good anime out there. So, yeah. And then the same with video games. Like there's lots of great video games, you know, like there's a lot of RPGs and, you know, tons of action games that are good. They're a little violent, but. You know, it's not like I personally, I don't like to play games that have a lot of cuss words. I don't like a, a couple cuss words here and there. Like, for example, I play I play Uncharted. I love I love the Uncharted series and the, uh, Drake cusses a little bit, but not that much. It's not every other word is F this, F that. You know, it's it's not. I can't play a game where it's constant, constant cussing. You know, it's like, you know, use another word. You know, like there's other words in the English language you can use, you know. So that's just my preference. But. Yeah, but that's my point. I can give everybody else the time, the chance to talk. <laughs> so, short answer finish, Karen. Is that what we're going for? Yeah, we're trying to summarize everything we just talked about. Gotcha. Yeah. So... I would appeal to David. He quoted the best thing I think you could think of the Bible is Paul and saying, I can do all things when all things are beneficial. Read mm -hmm. your Bible, have prayer time, be with God, make smart choices, enjoy your anime. And that yeah. Yeah. Love it. That was shorter than mine. <laughs> and based on um, everybody's testimony and sharing with experience of anime, anime definitely, and even games, and definitely can can be a conversation starter to stir up some really deep conversations and even bring people to Christ or bring people to have a calling with God or um, bring them to think about some deeper issues about life and about the truth as well and even though it is not the perfect media or entertainment for sake and it does would have some value um, depends on how we can use it so we also talked about um, everybody have different preferences and tolerance and standards and lines and how you select a game and how you pl select an anime to watch or play um, we also talked about the general guidelines and um, ultimately whatever we do, e either either drink and even play games and watch animes and ultimately and hope to strive to glorify God as the ultimate and purposes. And some of the um, elements of the games and the anime would not lined up with the value that um, that God hold on to us like sexual immorality um, those things so we do have to be careful um, to avoid some of the selected content um, and anything that I miss anybody can add on comment Yeah, I think, uh, I mean, it's already been, <laughs> Andy already recovered what I was going to say as well um, from earlier that, you know, you just, you got to read, you got to read the Bible, you got to read the word of God and, and have that in your heart and, and live by it. Uh, God gave us his word for a reason um, mm -hmm. so that we have instructions. Um basic instructions before leaving earth we used to say uh, was what a uh, bible stood for um of course that was a 1980s thing so i'm aging myself but that's what we used to say in <laughs> sunday school <laughs> that and it really is and i look at the word of god as uh, again coming from an emt paramedic uh background um as being a health book it, it teaches us how to be healthy mentally physically and spiritually and uh, I think we would do ourselves good by um, taking time out from each day, reading the Word of God and praying and, and like I said, fellowshipping with other believers. And uh, that will strengthen us uh, when selecting what we are going to do with our leisure time, whether mm -hmm. it's watching movies or anime or cartoons or playing video games it doesn't, or listening to music. Um, any any kind of entertainment will be a little bit more selective with what we're doing and, and glorifying God through our lives 
by having his word in our hearts. So that's that's mm -hmm. kind of my yep. ending stamp there. That'll work. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, happy St. Patty's Day. <laughs> yes. <laughs> sure. There are a couple of, of different stories. Um, but uh, St. Patrick was um, a young man in Ireland who what, he was born in England and he was taken captive on a raid and taken to Ireland as a slave. And while he was there, he... Um, there are different versions of the story, but uh, he came to faith and was able to come back to England where he trained um, to become a minister. And then he felt like the Lord was calling him back to Ireland, which at that time um, was not a Christian nation. And um, so he went and he established some of the first uh, Irish churches in Ireland. And most of my family is Irish, so this is a really big celebration in our family. So it's kind That's of fun. Awesome. Yeah. Hmm. yeah, I'm Irish Scottish, so Yay. It's like seven percent Norwegian. So That's I'm awesome. the blame. I'm the I, I guess I'm the blame because that means that I had Vikings and they're the ones that went down there and weren't the Christians. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we love Vikings but yeah, too. <laughs> that's we the, love Vikings. That's basically the story uh, that I was passed down as well from my grandparents and great grandparents who were first generation from Ireland and Scotland on the other side of the family. <laughs> mm -hmm. Uh was that he was brought over there as a slave and, and converted and then uh, returned and turned it into a, a Christian nation. Uh, of course, there is also folk folklore, like he chased off all the snakes, um, <laughs> which uh, there were no snakes on, on the island to begin with. But uh, what that was supposed to be representing was he chased off all the, uh, the pagans were represented mm -hmm. as snakes. Uh, being the snake is the devil, right? Yeah. yeah the Garden of Eden. Yeah, that's what it was actually supposed to mean. But coming over to North America, it kind of got lost in translation, lost in translation somewhere. Yeah. 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 But the um, thing I always remember is the, the, the teaching of the Trinity with the three leaf clover. Right. Mm. Well, and again, that's one that may be more folklore, but it's okay. it's okay. Yeah, it works well with kids. I still use it. <laughs> well, in it is a good illustration, honestly. Um, why not? <laughs> yeah. That's so cool. Even St. Patrick's Day, a holiday, and we can start up conversation about God and how God used him to share the gospel and establish Christian nation. So, it's really, really neat to talk with y'all um and I know we can talk forever, but uh, time is always mm -hmm. limited. I'm grateful that everybody can come here, and including everybody watch your lesson online. Appreciate everybody is here today, and I hope mm -hmm. all of you can learn something um, from our conversation, and hopefully can stir up some thoughts in your mind, and hopefully can give you some direction and guidelines and for the things you're thinking of, and hopefully can. Um, give you some tips and here and there then how to put God first and no matter which anime or which games you decide to do and hopefully you can establish a relationship with God and put him first no matter what you do and if you have any questions welcome to come to us and at the same time we have discord community as well if you guys want to join anytime all right thank you so much you guys and we have fun talking with y'all for sure. It was great. Hi. Cool beans, everybody. Cool beans. <laughs> All right. See y'all next time. Yeah, See you next time. Bye. Bye.